Hello and welcome to this tutorial on creating a run cycle in After Effects. I'd recently finished a tutorial on parenting in After Effects and when I thought well I might as well finish parenting up the model and then I can demonstrate how to do a run cycle. So this item is completely parented up so if I select the body layer and move it you'll see that everything moves with it. So I've done all the parenting work on this and if you want to see how to do that then you need to go and see the After Effects Basic 16 which deals with parenting in After Effects. But this item is fully parented, I've moved all the anchor points to the appropriate place so that everything moves properly. Now the only animation that I have got on this particular item are the eyes, so if I push the space bar you'll see that they move side to side, but that is the only animation. Now what we want to do is create a run cycle. Now to create a run cycle we are going to have the item running on the spot. Now there is a reason for this because what we're going to do is take this composition at the end and we're going to pre-compose it and put it into another composition which we are then going to move across the screen. So if this item is running on the spot and we've got a really convincing run cycle and then we then take the pre-composition and then move all of that across the screen it will look like the item is actually running across the screen. It's much harder to even think about doing a run cycle when you want the item to actually be moving as the legs hit the ground. So what we're going to do is make it run on the spot, make it look convincing, and then we can pre-compose and move it to another composition to make the whole thing look like it is actually running. I'm not going to do everything because there isn't time, so I'm not going to bother with the arms. I'm just going to do the legs and possibly do the body bounce. Okay, so let's look at the legs. I've got two legs. I've got, if I click here on leg one, you can see that that's this leg over here, and leg two is this leg over here. And what I want you to see is that the hips or the actual anchor points for the two are different because when you run the leg that's coming forward has got the hips pushed up and forwards and the leg that's going back has got the hips pushed back and down and to make a run cycle actually convincing we need to bring in that kind of hip movement to our legs so our front leg which is leg one has got its anchor point higher and forward and leg two has got its anchor point lower and further back and when we run and this leg comes forward and this leg comes backwards we need to bear in mind that we need to change the position of this leg and not just the rotation so that is why on leg one and leg two I've actually got position as well as rotation open but whereas for the shin which is this area here I've just got rotation open and also for the foot I've just got rotation open but the legs have got both position and rotation because we are actually going to be changing the position to reflect the movement of the hip. Okay, so we're ready to start animation. The first question we need to ask ourselves is how long is this run cycle step to step going to take? In other words, from the position where this leg is forward and this leg is fully back to the position where they've crossed over and then come back again, how long will that take? Well actually, seeing we're going to use an expression, it really doesn't matter that much. So let's say for arguments that we think a complete run cycle with this leg forward going backwards and all the way forward again is going to take two seconds. So let's move our work area bar to two seconds and zoom in with this item at the top. So we've got the zoom bar pulling it in so we can clearly see our two seconds. There we go. So what we need to do is create our starting keyframes. Now we're in the right place to start off with. We've set the whole thing up so we can hit the stopwatch for each of these properties so leg one position and rotation shin one rotation foot one rotation leg two the same just go through and all those keyframes are created now it's very important that when we do a run cycle that it is seamless that there aren't any jerks that we've actually got our animation to loop perfectly now to be able to make it loop perfectly we really need to copy these keyframes to the end point. So if we go to the two second point where our run cycle will have completed, we need to make sure that these keyframes are duplicated at this point. So if we select those two keyframes, and we do either edit copy 
and edit paste or control or command C and control or command V. So control C for me. And if I hit control V, it will copy it where the current time indicator is. Alternatively, you can go down and use the add and remove keyframe function and just click that and it will put it wherever your current time indicator is, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So there we go. All my keyframes are created. Nothing's happened because these keyframes are the same as these keyframes, but we know that this point is going to be the same as this point, so therefore it will loop seamlessly. Now the first thing we need to do is think about the actual point where this leg is fully forward and this leg is fully backward, so that will be the midpoint. So we take our current time indicator and put it at one second, and then we need to animate this leg fully back with the hip, remember, coming back and down, and this leg fully forward with the hip coming up and forward. So let's start with leg one, select leg one, and we can rotate it back around so it's about the right place. And then we can actually physically shift it across and down so that it's about the right place. These don't have to be identical, by the way. You can make them look slightly different. You don't have to have them absolutely perfectly the same unless you particularly want to for some reason. Um, at this particular crossing point, they don't have to look the same. And then we can take leg two and we can move that across and up to reflect the movement of the hip. And then we need to rotate that fully forward. And then we might want to take the shin forward a bit as well and possibly the foot up a bit as well. So there we have the point with the legs completely extended in the opposite direction. But if you look at the animation, if I just hit the space bar, you'll see that that's far from being a convincing animation. And that's because of the crossover point. This here is the crossover point. At this point, one leg must be making firm contact with the ground while the other leg is passing behind it. So let's just take it to the front. So actually we need to be on leg one. So leg one is the one that's going to come down and hit the ground and push against the ground. So now we know we can go to halfway through. We can actually rotate this leg down a little so that it's even straighter. And then take the shin down a bit so that's straighter. And then make sure that the foot rotates right up to give what looks like a firm hitting on the ground. About like that. Now the other leg, leg two, is actually going to have its shin further up and its foot is going to be sweeping past. So you might just want to angle it so that that leg is actually sweeping past. So that at the midpoint, we've got firm contact. So let's just pull the current time indicator through and that foot firmly touches the ground and pushes through. So now we need to do the same with the other leg in the other passing place. So we go halfway through, which is about there. And we know that now this is leg two. Leg two, we can actually pull around a little bit further so it's straighter. We can pull the shin straighter and we can make very sure that that foot's got a firm contact on the ground. Whereas leg one in this point, we can actually pull the shin up further and we can pull the foot round so that it looks like it's passing through. So now we have two passing places. So let's just hit the space bar, push, 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 push. That looks real. That looks like they are actually touching the ground and we're beginning to get the right feel. Now obviously there are other things we need to do. Firstly, we need to easy ease all our keyframes. So what we can do is we can select the property, which is the quickest way of doing it. So under leg one, we can hold the control key or the Apple key and select those two properties so that all the keyframes are highlighted. The quick way is F9, but unfortunately with my screen recording software, I can't do that. So I right click on a keyframe, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And I'm going to go through and easy ease all of these. I'll come back to you in just a second when that's done. Okay, so all of those are now easy ease. So if I put the space bar to play, we're beginning to get something that looks a little bit more like a proper run with the feet actually making very good contact in the middle. Now, this might all be happening just that little bit too slowly, but we'll deal with that a bit later on. The only other thing that I might want to add to this is what I call body bounce, because when the body runs, it bounces up and down as the legs hit. So it will be up at this point. So let's go and find the body layer. There's body and hit P for position. And actually, all we're going to be doing is the Y. So what we'll do is we'll hit the stopwatch for position and then at the beginning, we might want to move him up a bit. And again, we know right at the very end, we need the same. So go to the same point, 
and hit the add and remove keyframes so that we've got it in the same place and we know that actually in the middle we probably also want to have him at the same high point so again we can add a keyframe and then we want to have a low point when he hits the ground it's coming down and hitting the ground so this is where we might want to put him down a bit and then I'll go across again keyframe at the same value and this time with that keyframe actually selected I'm going to go control command C control command V to edit and paste and now we can have a little look and see what we've got we've got something that's beginning to look like a run cycle okay so let's now extend our full length of our composition and we suddenly realize that we've created a whole bunch of keyframes actually looking at those I ought to easy ease those position keyframes as well so let's just easy ease those keyframe assistance easy ease I would generally hit uh, F9 but I can't do that with this screen recording software so now that we've created these we need to repeat them along the timeline. The only problem is, if we copy and paste them and then suddenly decide we want to make a change, we then have to go in and delete all the extra keyframes, make the first one right and copy and paste again. Now there's a much smarter way of doing it than copying and pasting keyframes, and that's to use an expression. And I'll demonstrate that in the next tutorial.